That ent entrance music for Kenzo. Lunch Money Lambert. Jeff Malott. Welcome to the Kai Class Nation. Where we talk about fishing and competition. It's your boy Ox Pippin, aka Ox Fishing. Don't come over here tripping. Hey, hope you enjoy the show. Jeff Malat, Lunch Money Lambert, <laughs> Lego. Hey, welcome to the Kite Fast Nation. Fast Nation. Uh, yeah, welcome to the Kite Fast Nation. Kite Fast Nation. Uh, Yo, what's up, everybody? Happy Monday. Welcome to KBN Live. Welcome to the CAC Bass Nation. How you doing tonight, Ryan? I'm good. Here playing an away game. Playing an away game. The away yeah. studio. You, oh, you yeah. got two studios. I don't have, I just have one studio. I gotta get I gotta get this one freshened up. I sent you some ideas earlier. I gotta I'm gonna do some background. I don't know if I want to do like sound deadening squares or uh I sent Jeff like an Instagram, one of those like Instagram Nashville backgrounds, like a grassy wall with a LED coming out of it. He said no yeah. to that. So I thought you were gonna start reviewing like pottery barn <laughs> stuff or something. I, didn't I know could, what. I don't know. I might branch out. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got, we got a big show tonight. If you guys saw, we're doing a, a b battery talk. We're talking lithium batteries. We've got one of the one of the owners of ProGuide Lithium, Pate Shoemaker, with us. He's going to give us the ins and outs of what makes a quality lithium battery, why brand matters. There's so many options nowadays, especially if you look in you know Amazon, Alibaba, and all that. We we don't want you wasting your money out there. We want you to go with a quality product like ProGuide. So he's going to fill us in on all that. So get your questions ready. And he was kind enough, Ryan, to let us give away a battery tonight. What for our loyal viewers oh my gosh so, did i get this right 12 volt 24 amp hour pro guide lithium correct just like the one sitting over my shoulder if you can see it up there under the red lamp up there so we went with something that kind of anybody could make use of uh you know running electronics or or, or whatever it may be uh in your kayak we didn't want to go like you know 24 volt or, or 100 amp hour 12 volt for guys that may not be you know running that on their setup yeah so that, that's gonna be fun and and we're going to get into kind of geek out a little bit on, on the battery stuff and it's important i mean everybody's running huge electronics multiple graphs bat motors i mean it, it's a big deal these days you don't want you want to make sure you invest wisely yep so and we've seen all we've talked about this before like these battery review youtube videos and stuff where the guy will like cut the batteries apart and show you all the crazy stuff that these companies stuff into batteries just to <laughs> add weight or take up space. Some have concrete in there, random screws. Like you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. I saw one with like bathroom caulk and duct tape. And, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was pretty wild. A little, little wild. emergency kit there inside their yeah. battery. Yeah. Wild West out there. So we're, we're going to talk to, I mean, pro guide has been in this game for a long time. Uh, so they know what they're talking about. So to, get ready, get your questions ready. This is going to be a good one. Uh, before we do that giveaway later, We've got a giveaway to do from last week for the audio podcast listeners. Yes, we do. We were going to draw the winner of that tonight. There was a huge response to that, Ryan. Really? I it saw actually... I saw a bunch of stories. A Kenzo, my own my own Kenzo left a review on the on the Apple podcast. Yeah. She was upset that we don't have entrance music and apparently uh, we don't have DJ Williams on Apple, so He's he's on there. He he comes on there, but it's just a brief <laughs> snippet and then I do a little talk and then we go live with it. So, I'm going to Fix it, and it's going to be more DJ, less Jeff. So. She she suggested that we hit up Cardi B for uh, for an entrance song. So mm, we'll, I'm stick gonna, with, we'll stick with Ox. I'm going to send out an email, <laughs> see if we can get a Cardi B feature. Yeah, we'll stick with Ox. I like Ox, Ox fishing, Ox pimping. He had a nice little video, a uh, little music video that he shot on his kayak uh, the other day, rapping yeah. across the water. Yeah, you want to get this out of the way right now? Go ahead and do the giveaway for the, for the last yeah. week, or for, for not sure. for the last week, but for the audio folks. Let me let me share my screen. We'll do it for the people watching in case anybody happens to be watching tonight. 
If you remember, I created a lot of work for myself doing this because I had to go screenshot Instagram stories, Twitter tags, and all kinds of stuff. But this is what I got. If I missed any, I apologize. But let's spin the wheel, see who wins this thing real quick. Ooh, who's getting slower, old? Anybody? Jay Burt. All right. I remember, I remember that. Either. Yeah. No, he didn't get slow rolled. So solid. Jay Burt is the man. He won the Revo glasses. I just want to say uh, we appreciate, say it once again, we appreciate all the audio podcast listeners. We get as much or more viewership and interaction over there on the audio podcast side than we do here. We just don't get to obviously talk directly to them and answer their questions and stuff. So long overdue to give some away when you say, Ryan. Oh, yeah, for sure. Thank so you all Jay for Bird. tuning in, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was shocked at, you know, all the different platforms. We were getting tags from uh, screenshots from Spotify, Google, Apple, several other platforms. I got one from Amazon podcast. So, you know, wherever you can find us, we out there. there. Yeah, we out there. We out there. So thank you all very much. Uh, and of course, let, let's give a shout out to the sponsors real quick. The whole show is presented by Dugout Bait and Tackle. Did you see their new website? The new I saw the new website featuring some uh, Guillermo Gonzalez uh, work. I also hobbled down to the dugout uh, on my crutches over the weekend to see Jamie out strolling about the pond on a 360. That's Jamie and Lee Rose there and Duke, the official mascot of Dugout Bait and Tackle. Yeah, not to be confused with Duke Tran at Mariner's Hills. This is Duke. <laughs> Slightly different. This one's more likable. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I thought it was cool, man. It looks it looks good. And if you see there, there's a big promotion going on, 25% off while supplies last on some some items there at dugoutfishing.com. And there Steve told me they're gonna be doing some demo, some of the demo kayaks from down in the pond there. Yep. It's gonna be a big Correct. sale on those. So reach out to uh to those folks and they'll get you hooked up. Reach out to Steve, Steve Owens in particular for your tournament questions and your dugout demo kayak questions. How about pretty that? much anything, anything much to anything. do with the sport. Yeah, Steve-O. So, Doug Abbey Tackle, we appreciate them. And then, of course, tonight we've got Pro Guide on the show. We're talking Pro Guide. They're the official battery of KB Nation. We appreciate them. We'll get more into that here in just a little bit. And then Bangtail Whiskey. You heard from, from Brandon yet, Bangtail? I have. Brandon has Lately. been in the studio. He's working on his new album. So, he's he's been oh. hard at it. We need to get him on here one night, at least for a small segment, just to kind of tell us his story. He's kind of a self-made dude that, you know, launched his own own whiskey brand in addition to 700 other things that he does. So that'd be an interesting topic for sure. Yeah. And then our, of course our KBN live partners, we did a Revo giveaway for the audio folks, Z man, Seagar, Gil. We appreciate them and, and all they do for the show. We just, we just love that because it helps us give back to the people that watch the show and interact with us. So. And don't forget us. those discount yeah. codes. So I was talking to Gil and she's like, yeah, we hadn't seen a lot of people using that discount code. Go on the Gil website and check it out. They have everything. They have hats, boots, short shirts, you know, obviously rain gear is what they're known for, but they have a, a you know, just a line of accessories uh, that you can take advantage of uh, the KBN discount code. Yeah. And, and it's a, a lot of money. It's yeah. KBN oh, yeah. Nation 25 and it's like 25% off a $400 set. That's yep. that's cool. hundred dollars. That's, yep. that's, that's a lot. So take advantage of that. And then we also have one for, for pro guide. Uh, there's another one for Revo. We'll get you all that stuff. It's all pinned on the group page right at the top. You can go up there and look and get all, all the codes and whatnot. Uh, what are we going to talk about from the from the week that was, Ryan? I know I've got one thing I want to get to before we get paid yeah, on. Joe McElroy won the freaking TVKA on, uh, on Gunnersville. Congrats, Uncle Joe. He went down there. He stayed right side up. He was safe, secure, and uh, dominated. Yeah. And Gunnersville was showing out. I don't know if you looked at the uh, <laughs> at like the top five on that one, but it was you know it's a three fish tournament, but it was right at sixty inches plus, like all the way through the top five. Like there were some really good fish being caught for it being, you know, the heat of summer. Yeah, uh, we've got folks trickling in on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and we ha we have our Twitch viewers, Ryan. They're, they're hanging yes. hanging tough on Twitch. I don't know how old the person is or what they're doing over there, but they're, they're twitching. They're watching us on Twitch. How, how many, how many viewers do we have to have to get monetized on Twitch? Uh, a lot more than we have, but we're, we're, <laughs> more, doing, more we're doing, yeah, we're doing good on Facebook and YouTube. So we'll <laughs> stick with that, but we're, we're branching right. out over to Twitch. It's going to be good. Um, yeah. So uncle Joe, man, getting it done. That was cool. And, and if I understand it right, that was tough. I mean, you had to really catch them because everybody was catching them. You had to, yeah. you had to put up a big string. Gunnersville is one of those lakes. Like a lot of places will slow down in the summer and, you know, just kind of getting a lull in that heat. Gunnersville has so many feeder creeks and there's so much grass that it can really, you know, number one, it keeps the water temps down and oxygenated for the fish. But I mean, the bite can be 
better in the summer than it is in the spring. So it's, it's a fun, fun place to get down. Yeah. All right. And so the last thing I want to get to, man, before we get uh, in here and start talking batteries is go back to something that happened last week and put a little clarification on it. Is that all right with you? Go ahead. Proceed. Yeah. So the, towards the end of last week's show, uh, I think it was, I mean, it was literally five or 10 minutes before we ended the show. Uh, we were talking to RJ, of course, about his big win. And I brought up a hypothetical situation about would either of you, if you removed yourself from the tournament on day one, any tournament, go back and fish the same tournament body of water on day two? Would you do that? And, and hear me clearly. I'm not saying if you had a bad day, would you fish day two? I'm saying if you had a bad day and took yourself out of the tournament, would you go back and fish the body of water on day two? I was asking both of you that question. I can't remember exactly what your answers were, but that was, that was the hypothetical question. You remember that, Ryan? I do. Yeah. So after that scenario, we got some, some text messages from a certain individual that was pretty pissed off because truth be told, I was referencing a situation that had happened at that tournament. We were talking to RJ about the reason I didn't name the name there is because this person, who is Russ Snyder's, by the way. It's Russ Snyder's. It was the person in question. This person didn't break any written rules, didn't break any laws, didn't do anything against any kind of regulation. No cheating was involved, anything like that, right? So that's why I didn't feel it was necessary to bring his name up. However, since he felt like he was referenced there because of the video that he put out confirming what I'd heard from other people, uh, I just wanted to hear what you guys had to think or say and what other people might think about it. Uh, he wanted me to come on here today and clear up my opinion on that. So to be clear, I didn't think Russ cheated, did anything like that, broke any rules, break any laws. But I'll tell every, tell you and everybody else the same thing I told Russ on the phone. I still think it was an odd thing to do and don't agree with going back on the tournament body of water on day two and having a chance that you might cut off somebody from catching a fish, one fish, on a, when it's a super tough bite like that. Yeah. Now, as it turns out, Russ did not – from what he told me, he didn't even catch any fish day two. He struggled day two as well until after tournament hours. Uh, but the chance I wouldn't, the, the idea of me asking you all that question was why would you take the risk of going back on competition waters and fishing when one bite could have made a huge difference to somebody still in the tournament? Does that make sense, Ryan? And to Russ's point, he's like, you know, I, I checked with everybody at that ramp. I went up and talked to the anglers that were still fishing the tournament and made sure where they were going to be fishing and that he didn't cut them off or anything. And he went back and motored way on down toward the lake to where he fished previously. But to your point, if that's somebody's B spot or C spot and they're coming there to finish a limit on day two and they show up and here's, you know, a well-known angler that's in the tournament now with a motor on his kayak that is out of the tournament, you know, fishing that area that you're, you're relying on kind of as your backup plan. You, do, you never know what kind of things are going to happen. So, you know, we talk about angler responsibility all the time. That's one of those things. Like, would you want to find yourself in that situation? Yeah. Like if there angler. was, if there was an unwritten code of competitive anglers, like if there's a, a you know, this code between us all of, of turn, that's to me, that's something that you shouldn't do or wouldn't do. I, you know, I wouldn't, I would go out of bounds or go somewhere else. I wouldn't fish on the same body of water if I was out of the tournament, knowing, yeah. knowing the stakes for everybody else. And now that doesn't like, mean I'm right. That's just my opinion. I understand the challenge of this lake fooled me yesterday. I want to, I want to try to put the puzzle together before I go home. If I'm all the way out of it myself, personally, I'm usually so pissed off. It's not really an arm wrestling match if I'm driving home or not on the second, <laughs> on the second day. But if you're going back out to, to, you know, prove something and try to learn and, you know, correct from the day before, I would probably myself still stay in the tournament that way. Maybe if I did have a great day, I still have a chance at either moving up and getting some points or potentially getting a check. I mean, that was a tournament where a lot of people struggled, like a lot yeah. of people struggled. It weren't, it was not big limits being put up at all across the board. Yeah. And to be fair to Russ, he told me he just, he slept in a little bit day two, put his motor on. So he didn't want to paddle anymore. Went motoring around to try to figure it out. Uh, and like I said, as it turns out, he did not run into anybody in his spot where he stopped to fish and nobody came in there before the tournament was over. So it actually didn't end up hurting anyone. I was just posing the scenario as very odd to me. Like I wouldn't want to take that risk and I would caution anybody about wanting to take that risk about going on tournament waters because obviously anybody can do whatever you want. I mean, if you yeah. don't even tournament fish, you could have rolled in there with five of your buddies and fished right on top of RJ. There's yeah. no law against yep. that. You can do whatever you want, but between competitive anglers, that was my point. 
So to be clear, I still don't think folks should do that if you're going to withdraw from the tournament and go fish somewhere else. But Russ didn't cheat. Russ didn't break any laws. Russ did not do anything trying to hurt anyone's fishing. So I think we're, and we're all clear on that. Russ didn't listen to the podcast before yeah. he <laughs> was pissed off and reached out to you and I. That's something I always encourage people to do. If if it's if so by somebody calls and tells you something that you should be mad about. I highly recommend you actually, you know, researching what you're supposed to be upset about before you, you know, go ahead and fire some shots. I think that's always a, a good idea as, as adults here. Yeah. By the time Russ and I got off the phone, we understood each other's point. He understood where I was coming from. You know, he explained what he was doing. It's just that, that was just my opinion. It's still my opinion. If you, if you're out of the tournament on YouTube, don't fish the same water as everybody else. Yeah. And our good. opinions aren't correct all the time yeah, yeah. at all, period. But we have them. And obviously people listen to them here. So if you ever have an issue with anything that we said, feel free to reach out and we'll have a have a nice conversation about it. Amen. Amen. With that said, Dun -dun what do you say we talk? We talk some batteries. Let's charge up here. Let's go. Let's charge up. I wish we had a sound effect for that. <laughs> starting, starting off with a pun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's Peyton, bad joke city out here, pal. Hey, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for taking the time tonight. Thank you guys for having me on. We're uh, proud supporters of the show and and excited to talk batteries and, you know, just have a good conversation. Before we get started into the batteries, give us a little bit of background on yourself. What do you do at Pro Guide? Where are you from? You know, how involved are you in the fishing industry? Yeah, um, so, uh, so Pro Guide has been a brand... Uh, since 1980. Uh, we are a family-owned company. We are based in southwest Missouri, a mile from Table Rock Lake, a little town called Golden, Missouri. And uh, we've been we've been selling batteries for a long time. Uh, we've been passionate about fishing. Uh, you know, it goes back to when my father started the business, uh, grew up, uh, we all grew up fishing. Uh, he, he tournament, he tournament fished like the local trails and uh, sponsored the the local guys in our area and it's just kind of a you know you know we're about selling batteries but we're also about doing stuff that we enjoy in the outdoors so uh it was a fun little connection and uh it's just kind of you know skyrocketed from there i say skyrocketed it's been a, it's been a fun ride so i particularly uh, have grown up fishing and as far as like what i do day to day so i kind of oversee the product and some of the some of the branding and we have a great team of people that, uh, that help us grow this brand and, and serve our customers. Um, so I'm kind of over the product stuff and uh, really worked on the, uh, the lithium launch. Uh, we knew this was coming, uh, saw it, tested some products for a number of years and, and uh, you know, wanted to put out a product that was worthy of our name and our mind and, and the brand that we've tried to build over the last 40 years. So, so yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of what I do. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of the battery guy. Yeah, and, and tell us a little bit about the brand itself because I know you guys have been deep involved with the bass fishing industry for a while and and a lot of connections with putting batteries in OEM boats mm -hmm. you know, behind the scenes at factories. So a little bit about the the uh, history of ProGuide itself. Yeah, so I think our first tournament trail that we sponsored, we got some pictures that go back to like 1992. Um, so like Central Pro-Ams, uh, you know, local local uh, tournament trails that were all over the Midwest here. And then um, in the, uh, a lot of times early in the eighties and nineties, they didn't put batteries into the factories. And uh, we were, had a, had a strong working relationship with a, with a brand out of mountain home uh, bass cat boats. And uh, they, they took a chance on us and they put some, some product in their boats from the factory about, Oh, I lost track of time. Um, 15 years ago plus, uh, so that kind of it's kind of where we got started. And since then, we've built a bit of a resume of working with bass boat manufacturers and uh, helping them, you know, figure out what batteries uh, the right fit for the, the starting side, for the trolling side. And now, you know, as that world has evolved with electronics, as we all know, you know, now there's now there's potential of an accessory battery or, you know, different charger uh, scenarios and, and wiring designs. So uh, we work with a lot of really great OEs and uh proud to to put our product in their boat at the factory so that whenever that customer gets their brand new boat they have an optimal experience like right out of the gate and now from from the bass boat side you're seeing kind of you know 30 35 years later <laughs> this motor craze start on the kayak side so now everyone is 
completely electronics focused where nine or 10 years ago, if you had a fish finder on your kayak, it was like, Oh, okay. Okay. Big money. Like I see you with that 2d over there. Good job. Hey, uh, when, so I, when I first started, Ryan, I had a, I had a little 2d Lawrence <laughs> that had a, like a 12 pack of, of double A's hooked up to it to power, <laughs> to power the thing. So it's, it's come quite a ways. Yeah. I, know. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy how much we rely on because now, you know, I don't think about going fishing. I usually have probably three different batteries in my boat, like to run <laughs> between, you know, GoPros and a power pack, my electronics, and then my, my motor. I mean, it's become such a, you know, integral part of, of kind of what we're doing in kayaks now. Absolutely. When it started off, I remember they would have those little drop-in mounts with a little 12 volt, five amp hour sealed lead acid battery. And, you know, you think about that and that battery's built to, to power an exit light for an hour, you know, in case the power goes out and uh, you know, they're trying to, you know, trying to hook all the stuff onto it and they'd call and be like, this isn't working. And, you know, our guys are kind of confused because kayak fishing was new and, you know, they're telling us all what they're putting on. And it's like, yeah, you, this is, you're putting way too much stuff on it. <laughs> of course it's not working. Work. Yeah. Have you ever seen math before? Just do, yeah. <laughs> do um, the math on the amp draw. That's a, that's yeah. a trick. Yeah, and then they start talking about Pukert's law, and and then we lose everybody, and uh, that's when it goes <laughs> that goes out the window, and it's like it's not it's not math anymore; it's advanced math. Yeah. So when the lithium craze started, I mean, did you expect it to be kind of the mainstay that it is now? I mean, now I feel like it, there's not there's not a lead acid consideration when people are buying batteries. In the um, you know, what's interesting is for a long time, the conversation wasn't really which battery do I buy? It was just, do I need batteries? And, you know, the consumer would go to their boat dealer and they'd, and, you know, they'd say, oh, my trolling motor, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, it's not performing. And they'd just put a new set in. And there was really very little conversation about what it was they needed. And lithium has, and when AGM came out um, and really became popular in the market there was a little bit more education more conversation but when lithium came out there was just so many new new things to learn uh new new ways because you could go smaller uh you could go higher in voltage all these different variables allowed or really drove many conversations so when it first i remember whenever we had our first conversation with putting lithium batteries in a boat and this was probably eight, nine years ago, um, obviously lithium had been out and been put into boats, but it was just the most rare cases. Uh, so whenever it first came out for us as battery guys that have been doing this a long time, it was just this crazy notion that there's no way on earth that anybody would put 3000, you know, $3,000 batteries in a boat. It's just not going to happen. Um, but there were a few people that kind of held out and was like, man, if it does what it says, it's going to do, there's going to be people that want it because yes, you know, your, your cost per mile cost per fishing trip. Um, you know, if you really do the math and you look at how many cycles or whatever you have, it's like, you know, it's not a crazy equation, but you know, that upfront cost was crazy, uh, for, for everybody. I mean, just a ton, ton of money. So to think that it would be today where it is, I don't think anybody really expected that, but I think we knew once enough stories were out there that the the consumer would make it happen. And I think especially, you know, when you look at like what the cost of electronics are today, you know, um, the cost of, you know, the tackle that we buy every week to go out and fish for eight hours, like, you know, you kind of can start to justify in your mind, like, hey, man, I'm going to use this thing for years. And I have to have it to do what I need to do. Um, yeah, it 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 makes sense. But boy, at first it's kind of a it's kind of a wild proposition. Yeah, we've got some questions building up. I'm gonna star them up here, Ryan, and put them in the queue. We'll get to them. Do it. Here I'm, the I'm on a I'm on a borrowed laptop. So okay, can, yeah. Uh, so I'll star them up. We'll get to them here in a little bit. So keep <laughs> throwing your questions in there, and we'll we'll get them to pay here in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I just want to ask you, and, and this is one of the, the questions that, that I had on my list here, and I'm sure other people are wondering the same thing. Mm -hmm. There are so many lithium options now, right? I mean, yeah. pro guides have obviously been around a while. They know what they're doing. They've got a quality product. But 
anybody can go to Amazon or Alibaba or wherever and try to find a green sticker that says lithium battery for a little bit cheaper price. You were talking about the cost mm -hmm. of, of these batteries. So I wanted to ask straight up, what, why does brand, why does, why does that quality matter so much? Because it does. Yeah. And you know, honestly, I don't have a, a real stump speech on this, but I, I think what, what our kind of go-to here is um, for, for pro guide is that uh, we've, we have been in business for 40 years and we've built a business on customer service and, and quality product. And, you know, it, it's, there's no, like you said, Amazon, Alibaba, you know, rattle them off. You can go find product cheaper. There's no doubt about it. Just like you can go find a super cheap kayak at Walmart and it will do the job, right? Like it will do the job, but there's certain things that, um, you know, come into question and it, for, for me as a, you know, a battery guy, it comes down to peace of mind and um, knowing that a company that's been around for 40 years stands behind it and that, you know, I have, you know, literally over a hundred people in our company that every day their sole job is to take care of the customer. And I, as an owner, as a principal in this business, I'm not going to put a product out that my people can't stand behind. So while uh, lithium and the chemistry as a whole um, is, is doing really well, there are certain things um, and, and YouTube and information and blogs on the internet can teach you some of that stuff. Uh, there are certain things that are important and there are certain things that come down to, you know, not only the, the quality of the product, the quality of the, the build process, the quality of shipping, the quality of the certifications that the company has or hasn't paid for. Every one of my batteries has been UN33 tested. And, that, and if you look into that, you know, that's a, that's a, a pretty, pretty expensive test. And it's one that we believed out of the gate. It was like, we have to have this. It's for DOT regulations. It's for peace of mind too. And it's like each cell and each battery has been tested to a level to where it's like this, this battery can go into a passenger aircraft. Now it can't legally fly like that, but it's certified to do it. So there's a lot of reasons why, um, you know, we, uh, are the way we are and we build the product the way we have. And yeah, you can, you can buy something cheaper. There's no doubt about it. Um, but it comes down to that peace of mind, uh, you know, the people behind it and, uh, you know, us guaranteeing that you're going to have a good customer experience. And as you mentioned that the DOT part and why you can't fly with lithium, lithium is a, a fairly volatile substance. So talk about the different chemistries used in, in lithium batteries and kind of how you harness that and make it safe. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's definitely multiple uh, chemistries out there. Um, there's like NMC, NCA, lithium iron phosphate, uh, lithium polymer. There's all, there's this different and there's all sorts of variations. And I'm, and I'm not a, I don't have a PhD in, uh, in chemistry here to, to really dive into each one of those, nor would anybody be interested in hearing that. But lithium iron phosphate is the industry standard as the safest chemistry. And that is what all of our products are. Going back to that testing, uh, there are seven specific uh, testing parameters that each one of these batteries and cells are tested on. Uh, that's um, heat, overcharge, shock, uh, vibration, uh, cell puncture. So like literally that cell is going to be punctured by a nail. And what happens when you do that? When you're exposing it to, a, um, what? No, so uh, I'm trying to think here. So the drop, vibration, heat, overcharge, puncture, uh, temperature, uh, high temp and low temp. So, um, you know, that, that testing allows us to feel confident in the product that it's going to not only perform well for you guys, but also be safe. Uh, you know, when that's, you know, when that product's in your, in your home, in your garage and it's charging or you're out, you know, out on the water and you're discharging that product and maybe, you know, it's 105 degrees like it was here last week on Table Rock at two o'clock in the afternoon. And, you know, I don't know who out, who's out there fishing at 105, but there's there's some diehards out there. But, uh, you know, the battery's got to perform. So we know those we know those tolerances are in check and, uh, you know, the product's going to do its job. So lithium iron phosphate is 
is the industry standard safest chemistry out there? Every every week you're going to see, I see different, you know, all this next new uh, variation of lithium is here and it's safer and it's better. Um, lithium iron phosphate is the number one commercialized product at this point uh, for the aftermarket in these applications. And that is because it is the safest. It's not to say that it will always be the safest. There may be something coming out, you know, next week, but we're very happy with the performance, the safety and the cycle life that the, that the chemistry is providing today. You said something really interesting there that we don't need to overlook, which is safety. There's a lot, a lot of these brands, these, these off-label brands, they don't check all those same boxes. I know they don't. There's there's some YouTubers that do some breakdowns and dig into these batteries and look at all the specs. And I know for a fact that they just they just don't check all those boxes, whether you know, whether it's the the high low temperature, whether it's uh some of the different safety features, they don't check those boxes. So that's something you have to consider because we've seen some pictures, Ryan. You've seen them of of people's kayaks like melting down from, from having the wrong hookups or the wrong battery in there. Yeah, but yeah. I mean you you've seen them catch on fire, especially on I feel like charging is kind of the if you're going to see one fail or something go wrong, it seems like it's during that charging phase, whether it's the battery itself that catches on fire or the charger. And, and that's one of the things like I've had it happen personally on, on a specific brand where the chargers will get hot or melt and catch on fire. I mean, what's, what's your recommendation, Pate, as far as charging these batteries? I, I, you know, I know there's a lot of different options. There's some cheap chargers that are sold with the batteries. And then there's like aftermarket, like large chargers where you can select 12, 24, 36 volt. They have a power shut off. And I mean, they're not cheap. They're 50 or 60 bucks. But if it keeps your right. house from burning down, I feel like that's probably $60 well spent. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very similar. The charger game like batteries is there's a ton of options out there and there's, you know, hundreds. Um, one, a brand that we've partnered with and done a lot of work with and uh, sold a lot of chargers is the NOCO Genius line. And we've, you know, we've, we've worked with the Minkota line as well, but uh, the NOCO line, that Genius 10 right there, right in the middle, that's a standard um, 12 volt, 10 amp, uh, you know, what they call just a aftermarket bench charger. They also have the multi-bank chargers. Um, you know, if you want to mount that charger and uh, make that in just a plug and play scenario. So that charger is a great charger. I mean, honestly, you know, uh, you got a lawnmower, you got a motorcycle, you got a car at home, like that genius 10, I mean, that's going to do everything for you. You can charge your, you know, your accessory battery on your kayak. You can, you know, top off your lawnmower battery before, you know, spring, you can, you know, you leave the key on in your truck. I mean, that thing will do, do it all. Um, and it's going to be safe because you can choose between lead acid, AGM, lithium, um, and it has different features and modes. Um, as far as like when to charge, uh, it's always, you know, there's always a lot of misconceptions or ideas of, you know, when do you charge? Do you want to let them run all the way down or not? Or, you know, um, we simply say after you use the battery, charge it. After you that, was, that was one of the it. questions. That was one of the chart. That was one of the questions we had queued up there. Should he charge yeah. it when it's every time he goes out or just when it gets low? I would charge it every single time that, uh, that you use it. Um, whether that's 10% of the capacity or a hundred percent. And what that does, um, is it, with lithium, it is, um, it is far less degrading to the, to the battery. Even if you did let it go down to 20% and let it sit there for months, it's not going to hurt it. If you do that to a lead acid or even an AGM battery, say you go out and uh, you've got a single 12 volt, you know, AGM in your kayak and you run it down one day and you forget to plug it in and you come back months later, mates last trip, whatever. And it sits there for months. Um, that battery may or may not come back. And if it does come back, it's definitely not going to perform the same ever again. Um, that when, when you have a lead acid battery and it sits dead like that, and if it's a flooded battery and it sits for, for months like that dead, I mean, it's, it's toast. In, in a lot of cases, even if it's got plenty of fluid and even if it does, you do get it to charge back up, you'll take it out there and you'll be like, man, I used to be able to go for two hours and now I'm only going for 15 minutes. Well, that sulfation is basically calcified on the plates and you have zero capacity at that point. So, but with lithium, just charge it after you use it. That's, you know, there's no memory. So Tim Percy's one of our uh, 
kayak fishing experts, I'd say, on rigging and motors and electronics, and that's what he said there. Uh, he puts his back on the charger every time he gets home. Yep. I yep. don't know if they'd allow that in Canada, but apparently they do. So there you go. <laughs> Their power grid is great. <laughs> Yeah. And then, you know, you'll sometimes see people talk about um, like depth of discharge or you'll see like a little DOD rating. They'll say like 80% DOD. And that, that means that, um, you know, how much capacity you've removed from that battery and the, the, the lower percentage that is each time, the longer the battery will last. So if you only take 20% out each time, you're going to cycle you know, 100, 200% longer. Um, the more you use it consistently up and down, uh, the less cycles you're going to have. So that's why charging it is is optimal every time. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to get to use it longer. That, that was one of my next questions was just general lithium battery care. If you're going to make the investment, mm -hmm. you know, keeping it in a place that's too hot, too cold, charging factors, you already went over, already went over that, but just some general battery care. Then I'll get to these questions that we got started up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, in, you know, if you buy one of our batteries, you're going to get a, um, you know, an owner's manual and you're going to see some, you're going to see uh, charging temperature ranges, storage temperature ranges and discharge temperature ranges. Now, there's always going to be situations where it's, it's pretty cold out, it's pretty hot out, and you're going to, you're going to flirt with those lines. And when it's storing, you know, again, there's going to be times when that garage gets a little cooler, gets a little warmer. Optimally, you're wanting to store that thing like you'd want to store anything, right? Anything that's has plastic or any kind of connection that is prone to any kind of electrical degradation, like, you know, 70 degrees is optimal, but you know, as long as you're storing it and it's staying dry and um, you know, you're, you're storing it charged um, you're going to have a good, you're going to have a good situation on your hands. Now, if you live in, you know, Canada uh, and you don't have a heater in your shop and it's, you know, negative, 10 out there for months and months and months, it is going to discharge faster and uh, maybe, maybe bring it inside. Ryan, when he said, it. keep it dry. There was a native joke there somewhere, but I, I, I was going <laughs> to, I was going to say, we have some kayak brands that are traditionally full of water. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about, let's seriously, let's talk about why it's important to have a sealed lithium battery. And I think a lot of people, buy batteries based on whatever marketing scheme is out there and they're not sealed. And these people are out there, you know, on the water, uh, submerging these, uh, these batteries that aren't sealed. Why is it important to have a sealed battery that you're utilizing on the water or in the water in some cases? Yeah. And I mean, for all, for all the reasons, right. You know, for any kind of electronic, you know, some submersion is not, uh, is not ideal for anything. Um, you know, our, our uh, signature 12 volt line is all IP67, so you know you can get the old garden hose out and splash it. We've done, we've done, uh, we've done some submersion tests. We've done the, we've done the, literally redneck homemade. After you, after you pay for all the fancy testing, you're like, I want to see it myself. Yeah. You get the garden hose out and you like literally turn it on it and you hook a charger to it and you're like, let's see what happens in 12 hours and you just let it go. <laughs> so we've we've done that. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's important. They are going to stay dry, but you know, in the, in the bass boat market, there's some, there's some testing where they literally will sink boats for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's, that's a pretty much a torture test. And at that point, what they're trying to do is make sure that nothing dangerous will happen post sink. Uh, and, and we've, we've passed those. So it's, it's definitely something to be considered of. I wouldn't even any battery that's rated at IP 68, probably wouldn't put it in a box that's going to be full of water all the time. Uh, it's just not ideal. Even though it's waterproof, it's just not ideal. It's, you're running a risk there. So so if you got holes in your hole, you're out there sinking, taking yeah. a few over the bow, hold your battery over your head and pedal back to the it'll shore. Be, it'll be totally safe. <laughs> it'll be totally safe. We've, we've, we have brought in uh, some other product from other, from other folks that has been completely full of water. Like bring it in and it's like, this is heavier than it should be. And uh, literally drill holes and like drains out completely nice. and totally safe. Wow, that's wild. Uh, Ryan, I'm gonna get some of these questions. They're building up, I got like 14 in the in the queue here. So we're gonna, we're gonna roll through them. We're gonna go to YouTube first, if that's okay with you, Pete. Can we, can we go to the, to the chat questions? 
from YouTube, Cooler Lid AP120 says, so do you offer Bluetooth BMS with your batteries? Yes, every every lithium battery that we sell has a BMS built in. And um, that's, a, that's a super important piece of technology. Essentially, anything that you're seeing out there is going to have a BMS. And, and I, I say that with caution because there's there are quite a few guys out there now that are like homemade building building packs. Um, it's pretty popular. It's kind of, you know, if you're a nerd like me, it's kind of cool. Uh, but you need to know exactly what's going on. And uh, I would not recommend a unprotected pack uh, on anything, period. I don't care who you are. It's just not super, super safe. Um, unless, you, like I said, unless you really know what's going on. So yes, every one of our batteries has a, a battery management system. What that does is it, uh, it it adds to the level of safety. So if you hook your charger up backwards, it's going to stop it from being charged. So put the battery to sleep. Um, if it gets too hot, it, it will has a temperature temperature sensors inside the battery. It will shut the battery off. If you take the voltage uh, too low, or uh, like our 31 M100, our most popular selling battery, um, that BMS has all of these features that we're talking about over temperature, over charge, reverse polarity protection that's hooking it up backwards. Um, it's got a it's got a new feature out with our state of charge indicator, a little button on the top where we've added that pro boost feature to that. So whenever that battery gets down to sub 10%, the battery will shut itself off. In the first design, uh, what you would have to do is disconnect the, the negative lead, or you would simply hook your charger up to it and it would wake that battery. You now have the ability to hold the button for three seconds and the battery wakes back up, then allowing itself to be charged. Um, so yes, we do have BMSs on all of our product and they all do... Uh, very important jobs. Excellent. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to this, over to Facebook. Nick Pelton on Facebook. What's a better charge for lithium battery? Slow and low amp or fast at a higher amp? It's a good good question. So each of our batteries has a specification sheet. Most batteries, if you're buying a battery today that doesn't have a specification sheet, that's maybe a, you know, maybe a bit of a warning. Um, <laughs> so to not maybe purchase that product. Um, traditionally, you want to charge lithium at point or 10% to 25% of the stated capacity. So if a hundred amp hour battery, you want to charge it somewhere between 10 and 25 amp hours. So between 10 and 25%. Um, most of the specification sheets will tell you what that is. The most important thing when charging lithium is lithium wants a constant voltage. So it wants 14.6 plus or minus a 10th of a volt. And, um, and, you know, anywhere from that 10.1 to 0.25 C is what that's called. But, you know, you just want to be 10 to 10 to 25 percent of state of charge. You can actually charge it faster, but similar to the conversation about whenever you discharge a battery to low, the the harder you charge it, the harder it is on the cell and it it could theoretically shave some cycle lives off. So you're not going to see many chargers out there that are going to push past that 20 amp hour charge rate anyway. So I hope that uh, answers the question. Yeah. And somebody followed up on the BMS question. They said, is it a Bluetooth BMS? Oh, I see. Um, so on the, our signature 12 volt line, it is not a Bluetooth compatible, but our 24 volt or 36 volt uh, line is Bluetooth compatible. Uh, there is a, there is an app it's called ProGuide power. It's on the app store and um, the Apple, or the Android store. I don't know anything. What's the point of that? Do you play music through your battery? What's the point of the Bluetooth? Uh, it's Bluetooth it's kind of you just, you just monitor it through the through your. Uh, you, can, through your you, can at, you can look at the the state of charge. Um, what what we found is that honestly, it causes more questions and concerns for the customer than what is necessary because they're like, I don't know how to do this. Why why want to connect? And it's like, is it working fine? Oh yeah, it works great. And it's like, okay, great. So you don't have, no, no, no. I just, I don't, you know, it's, uh, why is this one, you know, uh, a hundredth of a volt off of that one? And, uh, <laughs> you know, just kind of adds more questions uh, for the consumer. But it is, it is kind of cool if you are, the, uh, you know, really wanting to dive in and understand the, the product. It is, it is cool. 
or Jeff, if you're running, if you're running a new port and, and you've been running all day, you can pull it up on the app and see how many your voltage, you know, how basically how much runtime you have left just to help calculate that. Absolutely. Gotcha. Absolutely. Uh, these are both the same questions. So I'll read them both. Johnny Maddox, who will probably win the battery tonight. What's next after lithium? And then Mike Wimmer on Facebook. What is the next level battery technology that will replace lithium? And you put uh, swap size, weight and power is what it's about. Yeah. So it really won't be what's next after lithium. It'll be the next iteration of lithium. Most likely. Um, we're actually, uh, there's, there's quite a bit of, um, conversation around you may have heard uh, about it's called solid state lithium um it is uh what it allows for is a little bit more temperature range uh when when charging and discharging and it also allows for higher cycle life so you know we are we're pretty conservative you'll see all kinds of numbers out there where it's like five thousand six thousand seven thousand cycles at X depth of discharge. Um, that is what is a cell rating. So this cell on a bench with a very specific charger in a very specific environment, you know, can do. But whenever you start stacking all those cells and you put it in a kayak, you put it in any boat and it's running across the water, bouncing down the road on a trailer, you know, your cycle life does tend to change. So, we have actually done product testing. Um, we actually have a battery at one of our OE factories. It's been on a charge discharge cycle since, um, don't make me lie here, December of 2019. It's been charging and discharging every day. Pretty so we conservatively say, we're saying 2,500 cycles at 80% depth of discharge. With solid state, um, the people that I trust uh, some of the cell manufacturers, they are very um, bullish on this. And they're like 5,000 cycles at 80%, at, at 100% depth of discharge, excuse me, and, and greater at 80%. Again, that is so far beyond what the actual consumer could potentially use. I mean, that's, you know, that's four, that's four boats away. You know, I mean, that, you know, I, I just don't. Um, we've not seen anybody actually test that limit in the aftermarket. Truly, um, we have batteries that have been in the field um, for going on five years. And last year, I brought one of those sets in because the uh, because the fisherman that was running them had had run them for three and a half seasons, and he was like, "Man, I just feel like they've maybe slowed down a little bit." And uh, we actually brought them in, did a charge discharge test three different times. And they'd lost three and a half percent over. He was right. Wow. Man knows the shit. Yeah. <laughs> he fell off hard. He fell off hard. So, so yeah. I mean, it, it really is impressive the the you know their ability to to do the job. <laughs> the comments are going crazy. We got people saying flux capacitor, nuclear well, fission, sure, uh, plutonium. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, flux capacitor, I think that'd be great if I could stick some banana I'll peels in there. have a little fission reactor in the old plastic boat out there. That'd be pretty solid. Yeah, hey, yeah. listen, for my dad has said this a lot. He said, man, I sold batteries for a long time before the battery business was sexy. And <laughs> and, and today, you know, you got Elon Musk out here and Capitol <laughs> Walls, and it's like, oh, you guys sell batteries. And it's like, <laughs> this wasn't cool like five years ago, but apparently we're cool now. <laughs> And, uh, so we're just going to ride the wave. So that's right. I mean, obviously, I, I definitely think the the lithium part has kind of taken over the fishing space because, you know, as we talked about earlier, just the huge reliance on electronics. What what are the differences in the? You talk about the cells in the batteries for folks that have never watched one of these tear apart videos or whatever. What's the difference between a battery with four or five, you know, larger cells and then? Uh, like the honeycomb type layout of cells. Yeah. What's the difference between those two? Yeah, I mean, it really comes down to, you know, so so in that example, there's different cellular structures. So there are um, there are cylindrical cells, you know, which is kind of what you're talking about in the honeycomb cells where there's, a, there's stacks of like D cells, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to see those in all kinds of applications, like literally Tesla cars, DeWalt drills, um, e-cigarettes 
um, you know, 12 volt batteries. Um, you're going to see, and you know, when you talked about the teardown where they're bigger blocks, right? The difference is the voltage on each one of those cells is actually the same, whether it's little or big. And it's just the amount of capacity that that cell has. And it really comes down to the preference of the manufacturer of that cell. What did they, what did they pioneer? What did they want to build? Did they want to build a, um, a prismatic lithium iron phosphate block? Um, you know, that is highly configurable for home energy storage and different applications? <clears throat> or did they want to use a cylindrical cell where they could say, whether it's four, um, you know, whether it's four batteries in series or 144 in a four string, three parallel configuration, I can do, you know, I can do anything. Um, it really just comes, it comes down to, to that. There's pros and cons to both. The cylindrical cell guys will say they're the best and the, you know, the block prismatic guys will say that they're the best. And really there's, there's use cases for, for both of them. Um, we, when it comes to that kind of decision are somewhat agnostic to what's best for the specific application. You know, when we designed our battery out of the gate, I knew that shock was the biggest thing that we needed to work against. Um, so we actually built a thing we call the cell vault where our cells are actually, you know, all, all welded together and built into their case. And then they're actually placed inside this black housing, the cell vault is what we call it. And that cell vault actually locks inside the outer case that you see. And what that does is it, like you watch those teardown videos and you'll see, it's like, they'll take a pack of those cylindrical cells and they'll wrap it in PVC wrap and they'll shrink and they'll heat shrink it. And then I'll place it down in there. And like you said, there's some hot glue and shims and things of that nature to keep it from moving it around. What we, what our theory was that, that, that moving internally was reducing the structural integrity of that battery causing small shorts, which can self-correct you know, the BMS, you know, there can be, there can be small shorts. Um, we wanted to, you know, minimize that opportunity. So that's why we came up with the cell vault and really it's just, I literally was talking with the team of engineers and uh, I sent them a video of John Cruz going across. There's a famous like video of him going across Sam Rayburn with the props out of the water. I was like, like literally we have to do this. Like this is what it's going to have to do. And, um, and that, that finally we got, we all got our heads wrapped around the demand of what this was looking for. So, you know, that kind of thing, that little, that little bit of, you know, context, whenever we're, you're designing a battery is part of the reason why, you know, we are who we are and why we, you know, why we do believe we have, you know, the best, the best battery on the market. So yeah, for, for us, there won't be any high speed stuff, but you'll have people like Ryan nose diving into waves and trying to drown out there in the middle of sure. the Not anymore, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys aren't doing that. Like, uh, water spillway race down the chute where there's sometimes you know, it depends sometimes. how much it rains and how hard <laughs> the wind blows brother <laughs> extreme to me <laughs> yeah, fish toledo, are down there they'll go down toledo there. bend with a 30 mile an hour north wind and you'll be doing whatever you want to do it's uh yeah. in, in in uh nature's hands at that point For sure uh, all right, I'm going to rapid fire you some more questions so we can try to get to everybody's here. Uh, over on YouTube, Burn asked, when did Pro Guide start playing with lithium? I think you kind of already answered that, didn't you? When, when did you kind of uh, get into lithium? Yeah. Um, I really should. Uh, 2016, 20, 15 or 16, I started to test factories and sales. So we're going, yeah, we're going on. Uh, pushing up on a decade here we go uh john on youtube asked is there ever a time too much charging of a lithium can shorten the life is it bad i guess to leave it on the charger as long as it's not overcharging the, the battery management system is going to protect it and if you as long as you have a charger that's not trying to consistently just keep forcing it and that's shutting the battery off and then waking the battery up um as long as you have a an intelligent charger um no it's not going to hurt anything uh, facebook chris hogan and the reason I'm reading all these to you is obviously we got the audio podcast listeners. So they want to hear what these questions are as well. Uh, Chris Hogan on Facebook. Does it matter if you charge your batteries in a closed box? The kayaks obviously have black packs, different crates. Mm -hmm. um, some of them storm inside the hole uh, or should they be ventilated? As long as there's some circulation around it, I, I think you're totally fine. If you think about the other applications that these batteries are going in closed, closed hatch 
in the back of a boat and they're charging. Uh, anytime there's extra ventilation, you, you know, you're just going to move that heat around. It's ideal, but it's not 100% necessary. Uh, Trey Lashley over on YouTube. Are there any good battery percent meters outside of the, that Bluetooth option you mentioned just to have a good idea how much juice is left? Do you guys yeah. know anything goes up? Um, there is, um, actually I have one over here. Hold on. Johnny on the spot. It's kind of pricey and it's kind of overkill, but this is a Victron sh smart shunt, 500 amp total overkill for, for that. But if you did have somebody that really wanted to, they have a really sweet app and uh, they do make a waterproof version. So I don't, I don't sell these today, but, but uh, you can find those all over the internet. But Victron, how much, uh, how much does that unit run ballpark? I think they're like 100, 150 bucks. So if somebody has just yeah. spent, you know, three grand on a motor set up for the kayak, another hundred bucks probably isn't <laughs> out of yeah. the realm of possibilities to keep an eye on your on your battery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's got the nice little mounting bracket, and you can just make your connections. Dang it. Uh, back over to Facebook, Kevin Henriksen. What's the basically his question is do you have a 12 volt 160 amp hour battery that fits an old town AP battery box? Do you make a bigger 12 volt 100 amp hour? I have a I have a 150 amp hour, I don't have a 160. Um, but my 150 uh, is being used in uh, two other applications that are extreme. <coughs> Pardon me, uh, catfishing, bumping for catfish in like the Mississippi. Literally, they're putting their trolling motor on like one, two miles an hour, and they're bumping upstream for eight plus hours. Um, and then bow fishing is the other one. Uh, literally, my the second set I sold of 150s, I sold them to a friend of mine. Uh, four guys in a 2072 flat bottom trolled for 14 miles uh, straight. How many How many beers did they go through, roughly? Do you have any idea on that? There's not a number big enough. To see. <laughs> the entire 2072 flat bottom was full yes. when they got there. Just a, just a couple. So so yeah, that that 150 is a workhorse. Uh, it it will um, it delivers. Uh, I don't have the exact percentage on a 75 amp hour discharge machine. It runs 119 minutes compared to 70 minutes of a 31 in 100, which is like you know. Most kayakers, most bass fishermen, uh, can can fish two, three days on. So. What kind of runtime do you get out of your uh, your AP, Jeff? Full tournament day. A full tournament day. I mean, okay. full tournament day, no problem. Uh, now, a, and were you running a hundred amp hour as well? Yeah. Yeah. And, and somebody mentioned in here, Johnny, in the in the comments. Where do you, what do you say there in the comments? He said he he's not sure he would have a motor, and and this is a good point. I don't know if we would be this far down with the electron electric motors and kayaks if we were having to still use lead acids. Cause he's like, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that if I had to use lead acid battery. Cause I have a nightmare story about that. When I first got my AP a couple of years back, I got out in the cross out into the, the swamps with a lead acid battery that went, <laughs> went kaput on me. And I was in, I was in deep trouble. So yeah, I don't think yeah. we'd be this far down the road with all this uh, electronic Well, stuff. think of how heavy lead acid yeah. batteries were and where we are. Uh, could you imagine running a 24 or 36 volt motor with a lead acid bat like uh, you couldn't put anything else in the kayak you'd have to sit up on the bow just to keep the freaking kayak you'd, tipping up you'd sit yeah. on the battery you'd be a hundred <laughs> you'd be you know you're averaging about 55 pounds for a, a standard 12 volt flooded battery that was brutal, brutal. And could be 80 for yeah. a really good one yeah that was that was no good but it did give me confidence that my ap wouldn't crack <laughs> well, that's at least you proved that point to yourself. Yeah, I did. Uh, well, on the internals, I have one more question of my own. I actually did a little homework before this one. Uh, on the lithium batteries, you know, we talked about the cell structure, but the the kind of the other piece to what gives them their profile or longevity is the actual computer board inside. Mm -hmm. uh, what explain to that? You know, kind of what that's about and, and how it distributes the power as far as discharge goes. Yeah, so I mean, it's gonna have it's gonna have upper tolerances, a lower tolerance. It's gonna have for for amperage, for voltage, for temperature, uh, for those safety features we talked about. So it's going to allow you to have um, a consistent um, delivery of power. It's really known and more readily understood on the electronic side. 
um, and, and on the trolling motor side too, where, you know, as you, and, and it's a combination of the battery management system and the, the lithium iron phosphate cell, right? That voltage curve is far less, uh, it doesn't fall off. So like if you're going out with a lead acid battery and you have to turn the dial up as the day goes on to, to maintain the same level of speed. So that BMS allows a, a smooth, consistent delivery of, of power, of, of, of amperage and voltage. Um, it, it really is just controlling the delivery of power and the intake of power. Uh, that's really what the BMS does and uh, keeps you keeps you safe. You know, and, and I say safe, not just like safety, but also the safety of the cell itself, just so that it performs well for a long period of time. And where you'll see that is especially live scopers. If you get mm -hmm. a tone in your live scope on and you see a low voltage reading, it, that's that's why because you're <laughs> you're past the peak of the <laughs> of the battery, whatever battery you're running, you are you're past the peak, and therefore you have lost your ability to get out and watch those fish swim around for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with looking that that picture that. That clarity doesn't go away as the voltage drops. I mean, it does a little bit, but not near like what you see with uh, with lead acid or an AGM. Uh, how much more time do you got, Pate? Because we've got some more questions to get to. You okay? I'm good. I'm good. All right. All right. All right, all right. They, every time I think I've got a full list, they keep coming in. So people are very, very interested in that, in this uh, topic, which I'm glad, Ryan. I wasn't yeah. sure. If our if our crew was going to be down, but they are there. Clifton, into this. Clifton fell off a little bit. Clifton Clifton was a little nerded out on this one. Uh, he let me know, but I'm yeah. glad we, we have some people that are thirsty for knowledge. And of course, you know when you don't understand something, it's great to have somebody that's an expert in the field come on and really explain the details. So hopefully, everybody has a little better understanding yeah. after listening to this. Yeah, so, so awesome. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna jump back to YouTube. Matt Miller. What's your thoughts on a 24 or 36 volt battery battery versus linking batteries together? Pros and cons. Um, so for for you guys, the 24 volt, the single 24 volt, the 36 volt just makes so much sense because you're eliminating the physical requirement of a second battery, right? Or a third battery. So for you guys, I mean, it manages, I mean, it's a no brainer, right? Um, for for a, a other boating applications, where you could, you would have the room to fit two or three. Um, it's still for that same reason is a, is a huge benefit um, so because, you know, you do have those two battery trays where you can have more storage um, because I'm old school in my battery ways. Um, I like multiple 12s because I feel like I have a little bit more control of the situation and, um, because you say you did have some crazy issue and one of them went, you had an issue with a battery. You're not going to find a 36 volt lithium trolling motor battery on a dock. You're just not, or a 24 volt. You may not find one on Gunnersville at the best Marine shop. It just depends on, depends on them. Um, but you sure as crap can find a 12 volt uh, on any dock and you can throw it in series. And is that ideal? Absolutely not. But can you get through the rest of a tournament? Yep. You sure can mix them all up. I don't care. It's not something you want to do long-term, but it is, it is a bailout. Um, so, so that's kind of one of the reasons the other side, and again, this isn't super applicable. Um, if you have a 24 volt or a um, 36 volt, you can't, if you, if you did have a need to jump, you know, a motor, you know, again, this is for a different kind of boat, but that is the other main argument for the single 12 volts because you got a built in, you know, you got three built in jump packs. So there's pros for and cons. I just, I enjoyed the headache of not having to take them apart to charge or switch them around to charge together at the same time. But in bass boats, weight distribution is a big factor that mm -hmm. goes into the performance of hull design on bass boats. They have to have weight in the rear and they are designed to have that weight in the rear. And that was some of the things like when everybody started making that change to lithium, they were seeing different speed numbers top end mm -hmm. on their bass boats because they were lighter in the rear end. So I think from a bass boat perspective, you do want to continue to run multiple batteries because of, you know, that factor alone. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because some boats, got faster immediately 
it's like the boats that weren't very fast got faster immediately and the boats that were really fast got slower yeah yeah pretty wild interesting Good uh, back over to facebook Chris, christian astorega astorga i'm sorry if i mispronounced your name sir uh, question i just came across a nema battery connection built in for battery monitoring for your fishing graph is this nema option a new thing I would be very interested. And then he asked, do you have a follow-up? Do you have a battery with a built-in NEMA connection interface with your graph? Yeah. So currently we do not. We do not have that NEMA interface. There is, um, and, and I'll, I'll tell you who it is because it's a, it's a really good uh, company. It's Lithium Bros. They do have a NEMA uh, connected product today. Um, kind of similar to the Bluetooth, but, but, it, but it's also, you know, it's, it's less, there's less demand for it than, than Bluetooth for sure. Um, it's one of those things where certain people would really would really like that. But for the general consumer, it may not be something they're ultimately that concerned with. Um, a lot of programming involved with that, a lot of software development to 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 basically mate that communication network to a um, to a BMS. So it's not it what what information you would be delivering is not difficult, but just the the build out process is is potentially pretty difficult. Uh, but we got a, a long one. Yeah, long. Great answer. We got a long one from Steven Sisto on, on Facebook. A pretty long one. Can you believe that, Ryan, from Steven? I, I'm actually surprised this is on the topic of batteries from Steven Sisto. Yeah, so yeah. Thank you, Steven. So he says, when Good jumping job. brand to brand, say the control is 12 volt, 20 amp hour battery, some batteries run longer than others, as if they may be, they truly are a 23 amp hour, but dummy it down to a 20 amp hour sticker. Is it because the voltage is different between the brands or because they are truly larger? To give more to the customer does that make uh, sense yeah yeah um that's a that's an interesting insight yes i would tell you that um there are some brands that will give a little bit extra over what they market and there are some that maybe don't deliver fully so um i i'm not i'm not about to say any i have a product that early on uh, was was rated a little lower than what it actually was rated at. So, I, you know, I'm always in the camp. It's like, if you can give a little extra, fantastic. Never give less. Never, it's like never. on Tinder. Don't don't say you're 6'2 <laughs> and show up at 5'7. They're going to know the difference, okay? Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey I got people tripping, Ryan, on that. <laughs> Chat GPT. <laughs> uh, here's an interesting question from Facebook. What happens if I use a 24... 24 volt battery to power a 12 volt trolling motor. You're going to go fast. Mike. You, go, you go back in time. <laughs> what happens? Uh, you know, if, I think that's going to depend on the trolling motor, but uh, I, I can tell you that, that, uh, that internal, that internal board inside the house for that 12, volt, most 12 volt trolling motors, right. Or like a tiller handle style. And I know for a fact that some, even some lithium chemistries on a 12 volt trolling motor, or even some of those, uh, more hardware design control boards. Um, they do not like higher voltage and they will, they will let you know very quickly with, uh, with a smoke signal. The bow fishing guys know that pretty well because they run them. They run those things hard. Uh, we'll hit you with a couple more and we'll let you get out of here. This has been awesome. Awesome show. Um, Justin Rednauer over on YouTube. Are we going to see smaller dimension cases with higher outputs? I mean, lithium's already a lot in a small package, so mm -hmm. can we get even smaller. Yeah, so like that battery that we're giving away tonight that's on your shelf. That's that that case is tr is a traditional twelve volt eighteen amp hour. So to be able to to shove twenty four amp hours inside that, that's a sweet um, you know little package of of energy. That twelve volt one hundred and fifty amp hour that we talked about earlier. Um, you know, that's in a group 31 case. So traditionally from a lead acid perspective, the max you would see there is 115. So to jump, you know, up to 150. So I think that you are going to see more and more, um, you are going to be able to see more and more energy dense products, um, as that, as the lithium, you know, uh, chemistry continues to evolve. Uh, let's talk about the manufacturing abilities. This is something that I had Matt up uh, at the Classic. We were looking at a couple kayaks uh, at the dugout booth. What can you all manufacture 
as far as dimensions wise to fit in some of these spaces, because one of the things that, that we ran into in kayak fishing is weight distribution. You're getting these heavy motors, you're putting them in the rear of the kayak, or you're putting a bow mounted trolling motor on the front of the kayak. If, mm -hmm. if somebody engineers a hull that is made to perform for a motor specifically, ideally you're probably going to want to distribute that weight, you know, in somewhere in the middle of the kayak at a lower point center of gravity wise. Mm -hmm. So is there any limitations as far as what you can develop housing wise, if the market's there to support it? Yeah, no. And that's a great little caveat there at the end where you said, if the market's there to support it, um, you know, uh, because I'm, I, I, I really dislike the battery configuration part and figuring out what's going to work and what's not going to work in the development process. Um, so it's, it's, I won't, I won't say the possibilities are endless, but there are many different configurations that could be configured if there was some uniformity, um, you know, that was laid out, uh, batteries as a whole, um, has followed a has followed a code uh, an industry standard called battery council international the bci code so like when you when you see that group 24 group 27 group 29 or group 31 depending on who the brand is um that is a bci group size okay so whenever you move into lithium you know they take lithium and they put them inside of bci group sizes but technically you could configure them in many different shapes mm -hmm. and sizes, especially when using a cylindrical cell as opposed to that, you know, box yeah, style. Exactly. That you saw. So short answer, yes, highly configurable. Long answer would need some some serious potential volume and you know so if they were like a OE partner, for instance, on the kayak yeah. side that reached yeah. out to you to develop a specific mm -hmm. battery for this boat. Percent. To Could, make like a faster mm -hmm. I don't know, autopilot or something. Yeah. Who knows? But do that. <laughs> who knows what could happen? We we do that all the time, like with with different, you know, because we're 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 battery guys, so we sell batteries to a, way more than just you know the bass the bass fishing world or the kayak world or uh, you know the things that you think of. You know, we sell to security alarm system companies and tool manufacturers and all sorts of cool stuff. So yeah, absolutely. Here's a comment, Ryan, that I think speaks to the show tonight. Mark Cothran says, I don't even run a motor, and this was interesting. <laughs> good, good information. So, Thanks for hanging with us, Mark. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good stuff. That's good awesome. stuff. Uh, Very one last YouTube question, then we'll, we'll wrap this thing up. Recon UR6 over there says, do you recommend storage charge over full charge for a longer storage time, assuming you have a charger capable of storage charge? I'm going to maybe, maybe he stumped me on one. I've never heard of a storage charge. Uh, so anytime you're going to put a battery in storage or you're going to put a battery away for any period of time, you just want to fully charge it. There is, there is, and that, and that goes with, with lithium, there are far more tolerances that are uh, okay to, to store it at 50%, 60%. But literally the best case scenario is to always charge them to a hundred percent. Um, uh, and and, and just, that's just, that's just, you know, the safest bet, uh, disconnect it, you know, you know, if you have one of our, like a 30 M 100 or a 24 M 75, um, you can actually put that battery to sleep so you can fully charge it, put it to sleep, disconnect the terminals and that battery will sit there for years. Yeah. Few, few battery... People, a few people in the comments saying they think maybe he's talking about a trickle charger. So yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Of, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's maybe. what so, so I, what I would recommend is that, um, what I would recommend is you just have a charger that has a uh, maintenance mode. So like if you have that NOCO series charger, you leave it plugged in, that charger is going to fully charge the battery. And that once, once that battery is fully charged, it's going to shut off. And then every certain amount of time, the algorithm is going to wake up every 24 hours, check the voltage. You good. Goes back to sleep. And it's going to do that until the voltage drops and it's going to take it and charge it back up. But again, um, I will say that if it is a trickle charger or a maintenance, a maintainer uh, would absolutely recommend that it is a lithium specific maintainer. There you go. You have your answer over there on YouTube recon. I like it. 
Yeah. If I missed your question somehow, there were a lot of comments flying by. I apologize. Uh, you probably post it on KB group page and we'll get you an answer. Just send us a message. We'll get you the answer to your question. Um, but yeah, we're going to do the giveaway. You want to hang around for the giveaway, Pete? Yeah. Yeah. Let's run, right. run it. So you guys know the rules on that. Like and share on Facebook. Like and just throw a comment on YouTube. Same on Twitch. Uh, those are the three three platforms where we can actually do the giveaway. We've got uh, basically 100 people still in the live stream, only 68 in the entry pool. So the odds are in your favor unless you get, go ahead and throw hashtag ProGuideLithium in the comments for a chance to win. We'll give you just another minute or two. Um, and I think you guys got all the info you needed to make your decision. So when it's time to get another battery, you know, you go over there and check out ProGuide and pick up a quality product because, of course, not only do they sponsor this podcast, but they they support the fishing industry in general. They, they're big into the bass boat side of things. Uh, they're, they're getting into the kayak side of things. So you want to support those that support this, this sport that we love. Uh, I love it. We, we love it. Few, Involved with the whole crew, man. You know, I, I like that. I, you know, talking to Matt when we first struck this thing up, obviously, you know, getting him hooked up with Co Co Wetzel and that crew and, you know, him being involved with the charity and thing. Like I love when, when everybody can just kind of tie it all together. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't beat stuff like that. And that's what oh, we always try to absolutely. do. Here. All right. And thank you for coming on tonight because we were going to have Matt Looney on and I feel like the episode would have been about 40 minutes shorter if we did. So oh. I'm glad you can, <laughs> I'm glad you can make me I'll say this. He's been on uh, bass talk live twice talking about this and those are really good episodes as well yeah. just kind of battery information if so there's more you know if you're if you're a battery nerd and you like that kind of thing and the other thing i would say is if you do have a question you can reach out to any of our socials or, the, or go, go to our website we literally have a customer service team and i have a guy whose number one job like is to answer these questions for you he's got a cell phone that he answers uh that that is his job and he's the man you can you can reach out to myself or Matt or Nick or any of these guys. So if you have a customer service issue with pro guide, you will actually get a reply from it. So that's, you, that's cool. You'll get customer service. <laughs> that's, if, variable I mean, may be, if variable may be me. What a crazy yeah. concept. Yeah. What, what are we giving away for this hashtag, Ryan? Daddy. Landry? <laughs> <laughs> He'll get his in uh, about a month <laughs> and a half. I'll see him in October. <laughs> All right. All right. So who's going to get slow roll tonight? We're going to hit the giveaway. Uh, you've had enough time to get your entries in. We'll see who gets the slow roll. Here we go. Could it be Johnny again? I, I just it, dude. God. So you know, I was asking you who won the uh, Z-Man giveaway. Mike Marvel. Mike, okay, all right. We'll take that. So it was Johnny. Johnny's who won that Z-Man giveaway. I couldn't find Jeff. He doesn't even message us anymore when he wins. He thinks we just got him on speed dial. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I love it. Boy's conditioned. Mike. Yeah, he said what? Yeah, that's you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> no, the last giveaway we did for the for the for the NK uh, 180 mm -hmm. that that picture from was it his wife or girlfriend where he was in front of his TV watching <laughs> like lost his mind for winning the the NK 180. So love it, I yeah. love it. Awesome show and Pate, thank you for for providing a battery to give away. Uh, we love the support you give our show and and what you're doing for kayak fishing. We appreciate you, sir. Absolutely, guys. Well, thank you guys for having me on. It was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you. Take care, man. We're gonna try to get some more folks in uh, running pro guides for you. Right on. Appreciate it. Right. Have a good one, buddy. All right. That was a great show, Ryan. That was. Uh, that was. I, I knew that was going to be a nerd out show with all the in-depth information. That's why, I mean, we've been waiting a few weeks. We tried to line this up a couple times. Obviously, Pate is a busy guy, you know, helping run the company, but he was at a dinner last time and he's like, oh, I can step out in the hallway <laughs> and FaceTime. I was like, nah, this is probably going to get a little bit in-depth. So I'd rather, rather we do it when we can appropriately sit down and fry your brain for an hour by god that is what we did it is that is what we did uh what, what do we got next week is the hobie tournament coming up this week or we got another week in between for the lacrosse uh we, it says a week in between uh tennessee bass nation on pickwick is this weekend oh. i'm not sure does all american have one this weekend what do they got going on i don't know i'm out of the loop i've been playing too much cornhole first up dude i know first congrats up. jeff let's go Knocked it Let's out, go. son. Yeah, I saw it. I, hey, Ashley K posted it first before you I ever know. sent it to me. I, was like, I didn't even know. She's over there. I always, always got my alert. back, man. Paparazzi and me out. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that was cool. But anyway, we'll, we'll round up a guest for next week. It's going to be a fun, fun show for sure, no matter who we get on here. But that was awesome. Yep. That was awesome. 10 out of 10.
So if you're looking to upgrade some batteries or you're looking to jump into the motor game, hopefully we've provided you with enough information, at least to make an educated decision. There's a lot of reputable manufacturers out there. Obviously we have a pro guide bias, but just do your homework and make sure you're, you know, spending your money wisely. Amen. See y'all next week. Later.